You're back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> um, man, uh, what, what, what are the emotions like? Um, knowing that you're back, knowing that you had to grind to get back, right? Yeah, man, I was just telling Miguel just now, actually, I was uh, supposed to be in the Ultimate Fighter, and I got the news that, hey, I'm the alternate and, and all this stuff. So it was kind of like, you know, you're like, man, I did all this work to, to be on this show, to, to showcase my skills against the best in the world, you know, especially bringing a talent, international talent and all this stuff. So for me, I was ready to, like, really showcase my skills in a four weeks period, you know, and fight two times in that four weeks and, and all that stuff. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm definitely, there's a lot of hard work behind it, but obviously the journey continues and, and I'm very happy that I get the opportunity, the second opportunity, you know, not a lot of people get the second opportunity, but I feel like the most people that get the second opportunity to make the best out of it, like Brandon Moreno and all those guys. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to not just showcase my skills and to showcase my hard work that I actually know what I'm capable of. Can you talk about being cut the first time? Like, I think, Everyone, you, you, you look at your first UFC runner like, all right, you're really the only person besides Josh Emmett to go to, to a decision with Taporia. Then you get released off a draw, and then your two other fights, you win and lost. So it's like, it was, it was kind of a weird situation, right? Like, what were the, what were the emotions like when you got the news that, that you were released? Oh, man, they're terrible. The, the, the news is, it's, it's one of the worst news you can get, to be honest, especially, like, as, as being a fighter. And I, like I said, I was... By the way, the, Ilya Taporia had his hardest matchup was me. Josh Emmett was not a hard matchup. That was an easy matchup. If you get 10-7, let's, let's not talk about that, right? But if it was wrestling, that's a whole different story. But you get 10-7 in, 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 a, in a striking matchup, I don't know about that, right? But I'm the toughest matchup. And Demond, I did not lose that fight. If you watched that fight, I did not lose that fight. So I'll stick by that, and I will stick by that. I'm like the Sean O'Malley of this division now. I have that one loss. I'm like, okay, that's just four losses. That's it, not five. So, I mean, the, the five, not the, the draw. Take that draw out of my record. Add that to my win. So that was that, you know. But it's definitely heartbroken, man. It's, it's like I said, it's like... I, I said this before, I was like fighting not to embarrass myself, you know, I was not fighting to my full potential and I was not fighting me, like being used as a law, you know, and I feel like experience taught me that and then the life in general taught me that as well, you know, and, and I'm very happy that I actually got kicked out of the UFC because I think I unlocked a whole, a whole different like mode to be honest that I know I'm capable of because I know I'm one of the best in the world, you know, and to look at it, like you said, Ilya Taporia, he's... He's out here finishing guys that's 16 and 0 in the featherweight division. That's one of the best, the greatest featherweight fighter of all time. One of my favorite fighters, by the way. And I was heartbroken when he beat him up, by the way. So I want to keep that out there. But yeah, man, like you said, it's definitely heartbroken. But I have a good team around me and a good people around me to to really keep me in line and and really focus on who really I am, you know. And that's that's the most important part. I feel like I'm just figuring out who I am as a man. I'm figuring out who I am as a, as an MMA fighter. And uh, I want to be in the best in the world, and uh, and I will be a world champion. So then you go. To, so then you go back to the regional scene. You're starting people in the first round. Fight three times in, in a night. It's very obvious you're you're too good to be on the regional scene. But you're not getting that call. Like, were you losing hope, or were you just like, it's only gonna be a matter of time? Like, like, what what was the mindset? Oh, for sure, I was losing hope, man. It was like, I had to like really dig deep down in my faith and and everything that I believe in. You know, that was that was the toughest part. But obviously, life it, it teaches you experience, right? Which is a beautiful thing. But man, that the whole three fights in one night, uh, like, holy shit, like that's crazy. Yeah, like you know, I never done stuff like that before. My teammates done it before, like Dustin Jacoby, he done it for glory kickboxing, and he did the Sparta King as well, so, and that was a whole roller coaster, and like I said, it's, I'm glad that I experienced that, and to have that in my back pocket, but I'm never doing that shit again, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, now you're back, you get Billy Q, fan favorite, on paper, it's a very fun fight, how do you see the matchup going? Like you said, it's it's a fun fight, great fight. You know, I uh, I feel like I've been to a lot of wars uh, in the gym, uh, especially with my teammates. One of them is right here, actually, David Dunama. So I feel like I've seen uh, 
stuff like that, you know. And like you said, he's a fan favorite, you know. So people love to to watch him fight. And no matter what, it's either gonna be fight of the night or performance of the night or something with that guy. So it gets me out of my seat. It really gets me excited to to show like, hey, like really test. Do you want to be the best in the world? Well, here you got a tough opportunity in front of you to really showcase that, you know. Not just IQ wise, not just conditioning wise. Just in general and fighting in general, like I, I get to show case, showcase my whole skills. You, you've said in several interviews that you're much more mature this time around. What do you mean by that? Well, if you watch me fight, uh, I just did an, like an interview not too long ago. You know, like I feel like I have a chip on my shoulder. You know, I feel like uh, I, I want to prove to these kids that like failure can turn to greatness. You know, I feel like sometimes we we dwell over failure and go cry about it and and all this. this. This is a fucking brutal sport. You know, this is the highs and highs and lows and lows. You know, but you win one time, everybody loves you, and then you lose one time, they'll be like, "Well, man, you you were the worst MMA fighter I saw," and all this stuff. You know, so it's definitely hard. You know, just to go over that mental hump. That was, that was one of the hardest things, but again, you'll see what I'm talking about with the maturity and just the confidence of the style and the changes and all that stuff. I'm, I'm very excited for the phase two, and I'm very excited for uses a lot uh, 2.0. How do you get your hand raised on Saturday? Oh, man, I, 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 I see in so many ways in this fight, man. I feel like me going to war with him, me finishing him with submissions, me get, finishing with a TKO, KO, I don't know. He's hard to knock out, man. He's he have a hard head. I don't know. I feel like I'm Moroccan, too, so I got a hard head, too. So we'll find out on Saturday night. It's going to be an exciting fight. And finally, for me, since you've been away, your guy, Markel Medeiros, is, is now in the UFC. How excited were you t to see that? Oh man, that's that's my boy, man. I was I was so happy for him, man. He's he uh, not a lot of people know. So like I was with Factory X, and I was teaching the class. I was teaching him the striking, and then he joined the team. And like wow, man, look at him. He's he's literally one of the best in the team. So I'm very happy for that kid, and he deserves it. And I can't wait to see him get back. Hopefully, he gets that call for June. When is Louis Grulé gonna get, get in the UFC? Hey man, I'm gonna I'm push for my boy. I'm gonna push for my boy. That, if you watch that style, man, come on, man. How can you not have that style in the UFC, man? That's that's one of the most exciting guys in 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 the whole world. Thanks. Thank you.